Hello everyone, a very good morning to all of you. I am Gulab Sa, your mentor, and I welcome you once again to another session of RBI 247, whereby on a regular basis, we try to discuss certain current financial happenings around us. So, in this session, mein, we are going to talk about the urban cooperative banks and a circular related to them that is issued by RBI. So, RBI has issued a circular stating the role of the chief compliance officer as well as compliance function to be and to be encompassed by these urban cooperative banks. So, circular ke andar kya hai? क्या फंक्शनिंग्स हैं जो यूसीबीज को फॉलो करने हैं इन सब के बारे में आज की सेशन में डिस्कस करेंगे बट बिफोर दैट इफ यू हैव स्टिल नॉट डाउनलोडेड आवर ऐप यू कैन डू सो बाय गोइंग ऑन टू द गूगल प्ले स्टोर एंड यू कैन टाइप इन डाउन देयर anujindral.in और इस ऐप को डाउनलोड कीजिए फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ असिस्टेंस एंड सॉल्विंग क्विजेस एनालाइजिंग द पास्ट ईयर पेपर्स एज वेल एज हैविंग द एक्सेस टू व्यू द लाइव वीडियो सेक्शंस so let's get started as i have already mentioned we are going to talk about the compliance function and chief compliance officer in short we'll be calling as cco okay of urban cooperative banks let's start first and foremost abhi compliance function kahan se aaya so as you all know compliance is an integral part of the corporate governance framework. Govern karna hai kisi bhi bank ko, kisi bhi organization ko. There should be certain compliances that should, that should be followed by the people of these organizations. Therefore, RBI felt that these compliances are an integral part of the governance structure as well as of the internal control system. And therefore, there should be certain guidelines that should be issued for these urban cooperative banks. RBI in the past has also issued certain compliances functions for other kinds of banks. Okay, district central cooperative banks ke liye bhi lekar aya tha. Now this time it is, it has brought these guidelines for the urban cooperative banks. Okay, jiske andar jo bhi guidelines RBI lekar aya hai, all of this will be applicable to the urban cooperative banks that come under the tier 3 and tier 4 categorization. So, if you are following the news, then in the month of July, RBI had come up with a revised framework for the urban cooperative banks, whereby RBI had done a categorization of the urban cooperative banks based on the deposits. Kitana deposits kisi urban cooperative bank ke paas hai? Based on that, the categorization was made and there were sev several guidelines separately for all of these categories of UCBs. For example, kitna capital maintain karna hai? What should be the capital uh, to risk assets, uh, risk assets ratio, capital adequacy ratio kitna hona chahiye? Ya fir NPA kitna hona chahiye? And in how much time these urban cooperative banks need to guide glide through in order to in order to comply with the new provisions the revised provisions that rbi had come up for the urban cooperative banks so kya ye categorization hai we'll be seeing in in the next slide but before that let's first understand ki kya keh raha hai so these guidelines uh, related to the compliance function as well as the role of the cco will be applicable to tier 3 and tier 4 categories of UCBs except UCBs under all-inclusive directions. Now, these all-inclusive directions are certain, certain levi that has been uh, done by RBI and these are like under the guidelines or they are regulated by RBI closely and they are also restricted or subjected by uh, discharging any of their liabilities. So, this is a different story, hai, not so important. But you have to understand that if certain UCBs are under the all-inclusive directions of RBI, where RBI on a personal level is uh, guiding them, is, is restricting them from doing certain things, then such UCBs, even if they are under Tier 3 or Tier 4, will not be applicable to follow the compliance function circular released by RBI. Okay? Now, what this compliance function with, will consist of? So, these compliance function will consist of a board approved policy. So, the board of directors of the UCB will be approving a policy. 
as well as a compliance function, a complete list of the policy that needs to be followed, as well as the appointment of a chief compliance officer. So this chief compliance officer will act as a mediator between the bank, that is the urban cooperative bank and the regulators. Uske beach make mediator ka kaam hoga, that will be done by the chief compliance officer and the entire department of the compliance function will be headed by this person. I hope this is clear. Now certain timelines. Now this timelines becomes impo become important if these are just released before the exams. Abhi ke liye itna important nahi hai, tab tak yaad bhi nahi rahega, but just for your perusal because these guidelines it's, uh, of the next year or it's time pe exams ki notification aa jati hai, to thoda sa dhyan rakh sakte hai. So in case of tier 3, they are required to follow the guidelines which are released by RBI by April 1, 2023. First April 2023 tak unko follow karni hai. In case of tier 3 UCBs, they need to comply by these guidelines by the by 1st of October 2023. Tier 3 ko thoda zyada leverage mini hai as compared to tier 4. I hope this is clear to you. Now let's move forward and talk about the urban cooperative banks. Now first and foremost, what are these urban cooperative banks? Aapne cooperative society ka concept suna hoga, samjha hoga where people come together and then they try to pool in money in order to have, uh, in order to help each other, to mutual help create ho sake. For that reason, these cooperative societies are formed. Based on the same framework, these, uh, there are certain organizations which are established as urban cooperative banks. So, kuch banks hai that perform this normal ordinary banking business, but they are, I, their ideology is based on the mutual help, the mutual help concept of the cooperative societies and thereby the, the name urban cooperative banks. Okay, I hope it will be understood. Now these urban cooperative banks are the cooperative societies, the primary cooperative societies and these UCBs can accept deposits, can also extend loans. Apart from that, this UCBs are regulated by RBI. As these are banks, they are regulated by RBI. And apart from that, they also, they talk, they cater to the financial needs of people in the urban areas. Urban cooperative hai to urban areas to bhi dekhta hai. Plus semi-urban areas. Semi-urban plus urban areas mein jo bhi financial needs hote hain logon ke and that too based on the mutual help concept these UCB function. I hope ye aapko clear ho gaya ho. Now talking about the regulation, who all can, under which act, under which statutory act of, of the parliament these are regulated. So these are regulated by two acts. The first is the Banking Regulation Act as applicable to the cooperative societies and the second is the Cooperative Societies Act. So there is a Cooperative Societies Act as well. Uske andar bhi inko regulate ya govern kiya jata hai. Now talking about the categorization. So char category hai. The first category consists of banks which are having deposits up to rupees 100 crore. So all kinds of unit UCBs. What are unit UCBs? UCBs that just have one branch. Unke paas koi aur branch nahi hai. Just one branch, one bank, one branch. That is known as unit UCBs. If you take the example of SBI, SBI ki kitni saare branches hain. In your home place also, there, there will be three, four branches of SBI. In Delhi also, there are several branches of SBI. So, vaise hi, if you talk about UCB, unit UCB, they just have one unit, one bank and no branches. Theke? And salary earners UCB, irrespective of the deposit size. Now, what are the salary earners UCB? So, this concept is that people, the government servants, public PSUs, or any government official, in order to have that mutual help feeling, they came together and started collecting money. While doing so, they started calling them by the name bank. Okay? After a certain period of time, after a certain development, they also started taking deposits. Now, these are formalized and today they are known as salary earners UCB because these originally constituted of the salary that people deposited in these kind of structure. 
ठीक है तो जितने भी यूनिट यूसीबी है या सर्ली सैलरी अर्नर्स यूसीबी है प्लस एनी यूसीबी हैविंग डिपॉजिट अप टू रुपीज हंड्रेड करोर्स विल कम अंदर टीयर वन आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू ना दीज आर दी कंसेप्चुअल पार्ट जो आपको समझ में आना चाहिए और याद भी होना चाहिए इसके आगे जो कंप्लायंस फंक्शन है दिज आर नॉट सो इंपॉर्टेंट जस्ट फॉर योर अंडरस्टैंडिंग यू शुड नो क्या क्या पॉइंट है ठीक है वॉट इज द टाइम फ्रेम दैट हैज बिन गिवन सेकेंड इज द टीयर टू सो टीयर टू यूसीबी कंसिस्ट ऑफ हैविंग डिपॉजिट फ्रॉम हंड्रेड टू वन थाउजेंड करोर टीयर थ्री वन थाउजेंड टू टेन थाउजेंड करोर and tier 4 more than 10000 crore so if any urban cooperative bank having deposits more than 10000 crores then they will be categorized as tier 4 ucb so the guidelines of the compliance function will be applicable to this tier 3 and tier 4 that is deposits having from 1000 to 10000 and more than 10000 i hope this is clear to you the categorization part now let's move forward and study the framework for compliance function sabse pehle compliance function ko samajhne se pehle let's first talk about compliance risk what is compliance risk so it is the risk of not complying with any kind of legal or regulatory laws code of conduct and therefore because of not following these rules regulations the the regulatory policies you are incurring some kind of material financial losses ठीक है यू यू आर फेसिंग सर्टेन मटेरियल फाइनेंशियल लॉसेस एज वेल एज इफ देयर आर लॉसेस ऑफ रेप्यूटेशन ऑफ द यूसीबी देन सच रिस्क आर नोन एज कंप्लायंस रिस्क सो व्हाट आर कंप्लायंस रिस्क एनी रिस्क ऑफ लीगल और रेगुलेटरी सैंक्शंस आर नोन एज कंप्लायंस रिस्क एंड इफ यू एंड दिस बिकम्स अ एन इनहेरेंट थ्रेट to the governance framework agar aap legally jo legal rules hain jo regulatory suppose rbi ne kuch rules uh, lay down kiye agar aap unko follow nahi karte then in that case you will be uh, you will be not complying with the rules and they constitute the compliance risk and therefore the governance of the entire organization will be hampered theek hai so these so these compliances are an integral part of effective governance of any organization along with the internal control and risk management processes so ye bahut hi important ho jata hai for the smooth functioning of any organization that their governance is intact and smooth right so usko karne ke liye you need to see and control the compliances risk uske baad so rbi has said that RBI has laid down certain minimum guidelines and has directed these UCBs to frame their own guidelines. So, based on whatever RBI has set down, that is the minimum guidelines. Based on that, you need to curate it to yourself by taking in account the corporate governance framework, the scale of operations, any kind of risk profile that is associated, the organizational structure. and the code of conduct ab kuch ucbs ki organizational structure bahut hi diverse honge complex honge kuch ke simple honge based on that aapko apna khud ka compliance function prepare karna hai i hope this is clear to you the next talks about the scope and coverage of compliance function so rbi has said that these banks the ucbs should ensure that there is a strict observance of all the regulatory and statutory requirements for the ucbs including standards for managing conflict of interest so one major problem that is seen in case of banks is the conflict of interest and iske wajah se hi ke compliances risk aate hain managers at times try to just satisfy their own personal wish and because of that they can they uh, they they conduct certain problem certain or they just leave certain things and therefore the compliance risk increases the risk for the entire uh, ucb the entire banks increases and rbi had to come has has to come in and jump into in order to maintain the financial stability i hope this is clear bahut hi factual hai itna kuch samajhne wala hai nahi so we'll just read and we'll see what are the compliance function kya structure hona chahiye who will be the board committee now next talks about the responsibility of the board and the senior management ab dekho sabse pehle aapka board aa jayega the board of directors iske andar ek committee banayi jayegi 
ठीक है कमेटी होगी कमेटी के बाद यूल बी हैविंग दी सीनियर मैनेजमेंट देर विल बी सीनियर मैनेजमेंट आफ्टर द सीनियर मैनेजमेंट यूल बी हैविंग दी सी सी ओ चीफ कंप्लायंस ऑफिसर ठीक है तो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी दी हायर आर की वट विल बी द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ दैन सो द बोर्ड और द बोर्ड कमेटी हेयर बोर्ड कमेटी रेफर्स टू द ऑडिट कमेटी ऑफ द बोर्ड अब बोर्ड है सेवरल कमेटीज ऑडिट के हो गए परफॉर्मेंस के हो गए रेम्यूनरेशन के हो गए वैसे एक ऑडिट कमेटी है दैट विल ऑडिट ऑल दी कम ऑल दी फंक्शनिंग ऑफ द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इंटरनल कंट्रोल प्रोसेस को दिखेगी ठीक है ना दिस बोर्ड शुड एंश्योर दैट दैट द कंप्लायंस पॉलिसी दैट द बोर्ड हैज अप्रूव शुड बी इन प्रॉपर प्लेस एंड शुड बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड स्मूथली एंड दैट टू इन अ टाइमली मैनर एज वेल एज दिस कमेटी शुड प्रिस्क्राइब द पीरियोडिसिटी फॉर द रिव्यू अब इन्होंने बोर्ड अप्रूव पॉलिसी बना ली उसको इम्प्लीमेंट कर दिया नाउ यू नीड टू रिव्यू इट फॉर एनी काइंड ऑफ सजेशन राइट फॉर दैट यू दिस कमेटी द बोर्ड कमेटी विल हैव टू प्रिस्क्राइब द टाइम फ्रेम वर्क कि क्वार्टरली इसको रिव्यू करना है या एनुअली करना है या बाय ईयरली करना है दैट दिस कमेटी विल हैव टू डिसाइड एंड दिस कैन वैरी फ्रॉम यू सी बी टू यू सी बी एक अर्बन कोऑपरेटिव बैंक से दूसरे बैंक में डिफर कर सकता है ठीक है टॉकिंग अबाउट द रोल्स एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ सीनियर मैनेजमेंट सो सीनियर मैनेजमेंट शुड एटलीस्ट इन अयर एक बार साल में शुड ट्राई टू आइडेंटिफाई एंड एसेस द मेजर कंप्लायंस रिस्क दैट द बैंक इज फेसिंग तो जो भी रिस्क वो फेस कर रहे हैं द सीनियर मैनेजमेंट शुड ट्राई टू एनालाइज आइडेंटिफाई दो रिस्क एंड फॉर्मुलेट प्लान टू मैनेज इट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट दिस सीनियर मैनेजमेंट विल हैव टू सबमिट एन डिटेल्ड एनुअल रिव्यू ऑफ कंप्लायंस टू द बोर्ड बोर्ड को सबमिट करना पड़ेगा डिटेल्ड एनुअल रिव्यू जो उसने रिव्यू किया है जो उसको कंप्लायंस रिस्क देखने को मिले हैं दैट इट विल हैव टू सबमिट टू द बोर्ड एंड फाइनली इट शुड रिपोर्ट प्रॉम्पली ऑन एनी काइंड ऑफ मटीरियल कंप्लायंसिस फेलियर अगर कोई कंप्लायंस फेलियर हो रहा है इफ सर्टन मैनेजर्स आर नॉट परफॉर्मिंग एज इट हैज बीन इंस्ट्रक्टेड टू देन इन दैट केस दी सीनियर मैनेजमेंट शुड ट्राई टू रिपोर्ट सच कंप्लायंस फेलियर as soon as possible promptly and they should also come up with certain kind of remedial remedial actions in order to uh, in order to try, in order to try to solve the compliance failure i hope this is clear to you now let's move forward and see the responsibility of the compliance function to ek pura structure banaya jayega of the compliance function and these compliance function should have to assist the board and the senior management in overseeing the implementation of the compliance policy a board sara kuch kar nahi sakta it is going to delegate the work for that the compliance function will be made and they they are going to assist the boards and the senior management in the implementation of the policy apart from that they are also going to play the central role in identifying the level of compliance risk so what is the level is it still moderate or it is at the high level at the peak level and what actions they should take apart from that ensure compliance of regulatory or supervisory directions given by rbi so rbi also comes up with certain directions usse comply karne ke liye this a uh, compliance function should ensure that they are complying with all of the directions all of the guidelines that the regulator be it rbi if they are regulated by certain other acts then the regulator of those also they should comply with now the role of cco chief compliance officer as i have told he will be the nodal point of contact between the bank and the regulator and any kind of information to be passed on from the bank to the regulator will be done by this cco and therefore and in any kind of discussion held with rbi it will have to be a necessary participant cco will have to be a necessary participant there apart from that rbi inspection report shall be communicated to rbi only through the office of the compliance function अगर आप ईमेल के थ्रू या कैसे भी एड्रेस करना चाहते हो आरबीआई को अबाउट द कंप्लायंस अबाउट द कंप्लायंसेस इन द बैंक दैट शुड बी डन फ्रॉम द ऑफिस ऑफ द कंप्लायंस फंक्शन बाय द सीसीओ आई होप दिस इज क्लियर टू यू नाउ सर्टेन इंपॉर्टेंट फैक्ट्स फ्रॉम दिस कंप्लायंस सो इट इज अ वेरी डिटेल्ड 
uh, circular that RBI has released. I have tried to take out the most important points out of it. So next is the compliance structure. As I have mentioned, the compliance function will be headed by the by the CCO, Chief Compliance Officer, and there should be no dual hutting. Now this word is important. What is dual hutting? Dual hutting means that you are not trying, you are not giving any kind of other work to the CCO, that is the Chief Compliance Officer, which creates certain kind of conflict of interest. Okay? Should not be given any responsibility which brings elements of conflict of interest, speci especially that is related to business. So compliance risk tabhi aate hain jab aap apne business, apne profit ke liye jo rules, jo norms hain usko ignore karte ho. So if the CCO is also related to the business, then he will also think from the profit perspective and not from the regulatory compliance uh, perspective. And therefore, uh, it will not result in effective, uh, in in effective follow of the compliances that RBI has been talking about. And therefore, there should not be any kind of dual hutting. Next is internal audit and independent review of compliance function. So any kind of compliance risk should be included in the risk assessment framework of the internal audit. So whatever internal audit is, compliance risk should be an integral part. And apart from that, compliance function should be subject to regular internal audit. So the regular internal audit hoti hogi companies, mein, banks, mein, that should also try to audit the, not try, they should also do the audit of the compliance function. I hope this is clear to you. Now, appointment and tenure of CCO. So these are factual, but yes, you should know that the tenure of the CCO should be for a minimum tenure of minimum fixed period of three years. So, whatever CCO appoint hoga, wo teen saal ke liye hoga, except in certain exceptional circumstances, jahan pe isko remove bhi kiya ja sakta hai. Next is the removal only. So, any kind of transfer or removal before the completion of the three years period in exceptional circumstances should be uh, done with the explicit prior approval of the board. Jab tak board ya board committee prior approval nahi deti, that too explicitly in return, tab tak ab remove nahi kar sakte CCO ko. And that should be done only after a well-defined internal administrative procedure. So, a transparent way se aapko batana padega why and for what reasons you are trying to remove the CCO. So, bohut strong hold hai CCO ki and if we talk about the ranking, they are going to be a senior executive. I have already shown the hierarchy and their position should not be below two levels from the CEO. Jo CEO hoga, jo main board hoga, usse do position niche se zyada uska nahi hona chahiye. Talking about the skills. Simple, very basic, should have a good understanding of the industry and the risk management processes. Apart from that, knowledge of the regulations, the legal requirement and the sensitivity to listen or to work according to the expectations of the supervisors. I hope this is clear to you. Next, talks about the selection process. So how are they going to be selected, the CCO? So they will be selected on a well-defined selection process and recommendation that is made by a committee. So the board, that is the board committee that we have discussed, will can create a separate committee and that committee will decide to whom to select as a CCO. Theke? However, the final decision, so they will they are just going to recommend two, three names. Wo bata denge. However, the final decision to appoint a CCO will be vested in the hand of the in the hands of the board or the board committee. So, ye inka hi final decision hoga in the appointment of the CCO. Reporting requirements. So, any kind of reporting should be done to RBI. So, prior intimation, intimation should be given to the senior supervisory manager of under the department of supervision of RBI should be provided. So, if in, in cases of any kind of appointment or removal of or premature transfer, resignation, removal, or any other change in the terms and conditions related to CCO should be info should be uh, the information of this should be provided to the senior supervisory manager of RBI. The Department of Supervision ko ye message pohat jani chahiye. And in case of 
uh, intimating the information of appointment of CCO, the bank should also ensure that they are set, they are also providing a proper fit and proper conduct of the person. कि उसकी क्या resume बोल सकते हैं कि क्या उसने क्या क्या उसके skills हैं, what all he has done and whether he is fit and proper for that post or not. तो वो पूरा in written you need to submit to RBI. Talking about reporting, so direct reporting lines to the MD and CEO. The uh, the CCO can directly report to the MD and CCO or the board. And if they are not directly reporting, and even if they are doing, however, the board, that is the board committee, should on a quarterly basis help one to one meeting. So one to one basis for meeting, रखना पड़ेगा board को in order to uh, in order to see the performance of the CCO. So this was the entire detail regarding the compliance function and the role of CCO and these are important but yes these are very factual. Now certain questions for you. So the first question says identify the correct statements, very simple statements, cooperative banks can accept deposits as well as extend loans, urban cooperative banks are primary cooperative banks that cater to the financial needs of the customers in the rural, in the urban areas only and third UCBs are regulated by RBI. Identify karna hai, very obvious and simple question. I answer aap hume comment section mein bataoge. The second says which of the following is the correct categorization of a UCB that is in tier 3. Very simple. Third, third says what is the risk of legal or regulatory sanction? or loss of reputation called that is caused as a result of its failure to comply with the laws, regulations, rules and code of conduct called. Very simple. And fourth, what is the minimum fixed tenure for which a chief compliance officer is appointed? Again, very simple. In four questions ke answer, you have comment section mein batana hai. The PDF will be shared to you over the Telegram group. This was all for today that I intended to share with you. I hope you enjoyed the session. In case of any doubt, you can always write it down in the comment section. Till then, take care and bye-bye.